nestled between office buildings, sits this European-inspired canal. Inside of it, you might forget that you're right in the middle of Dallas's suburban sprawl. This canal system was built as part of Las Colinas, a master plan development that was built in the 70s in the Dallas suburb of Irving, soon becoming one of the largest employment centers in the region. Conceived amidst ongoing white flight from urban Dallas, Las Colinas was among the first developments that de-emphasized downtown Dallas as the region's cultural and business center, further contributing to the region's sprawl. And yet, short of building a standard suburban office park, Las Colinas was built with an urban vision that's as unique today as it was when it was built. Built in an era dominated by indoor shopping malls, in a time after Dallas had torn out its streetcars in favor of the automobile, planners envisioned that residents and office workers would walk cobblestone streets, navigate the area via water taxi, or ride a fully automated train, known as the Las Colinas Area Personal Transit, or APT. And yet, while the pieces of this vision still exist, they feel largely abandoned. Today, empty storefronts line the canal. Water taxis, originally commissioned in Venice, stopped running more than two decades ago. The automated people mover never expanded beyond its initial phase of 1.5 miles and shut down indefinitely in 2021. Lothcleanus' success as a business center ensured that the remnants of this unrealized vision still stuck around for us to see today. But why did this vision fail in the first place? Las Colinas opened its doors in 1973, built by real estate tycoon Ben Carpenter. The land was originally his family's ranch sitting between Dallas and what would later become the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. While the vast majority of Las Colinas was built as a conventional car-oriented suburb, Carpenter carved out a section of land where his vision would take a less conventional turn, building an urban center with a man-made lake and a system of canals. Carpenter had an extraordinary level of control over the project something that could be seen in every part of Las Colinas' design. He commissioned water taxis from Venice for the canals, named the lake after his sister, and replicated various architectural elements from his travels. This meticulous design, largely driven by Carpenter's exacting standards, would lead many to describe the area as feeling inorganic. This didn't stop businesses, though, who flocked to the area's carefully manicured environment. The canals became a vibrant retail space. The trouble was looming. The massive, meticulously designed development was expensive to maintain, and rents for businesses were highly subsidized. A real estate crash in the late 80s forced Carpenter to sell the development entirely. The resulting financial constraints forced the urban center's automated train to stop operating just years after it first opened. When the market recovered a few years later, companies continued relocating to the area. But while the business side of Las Colinas thrived, the urban center languished. Once the initial novelty of the canals had worn off, the only people left were those who worked in the area. The urban center initially lacked residential space, meaning the few retail spaces left simply served office workers during business hours. For all its unique urban thinking, the environment surrounding the urban center was decidedly not urban. Anyone getting here was doing so by car because public transit didn't arrive to the urban center until decades later. If you were just looking to do some shopping or eat, would you park right in front of a strip mall that's easily visible from the road? Or would the charm of the canals be enough to draw you to park in a parking garage and walk your way down to the canals? Bounded by a highway on one end and a six-lane road on the other, the canals weren't even visible at street level. It was easy to forget that they even existed. When everyone was inevitably driving in by car, what was the need for an automated train that barely went a few miles? Or water taxis, even if they were brought in from Venice? Every piece of the urban center's vision was chiseled down to a narrow purpose of serving office workers during business hours. It was no surprise that when the APT restarted operations, it only operated on the weekdays during lunchtime. Emblematic of its decay, a glitch in its automated control system led the system to be operated manually by a controls meant for emergency use. But then, a lifeline. In 2012, Dallas's DART light rail system opened a station at the urban center, with a transfer built to the APT. The APT's hours were expanded past lunchtime to serve commuters, and ridership increased significantly. For the first time in decades, there was talk of expanding the APT system. Years later, a new mixed-use development called Water Street was built along the canal system, and a new APT station was built to serve it. For a brief moment in time, it seemed like Las Colinas' urban vision might finally have its day. But it was just that, a brief moment in time. The pandemic forced the APT to shut down indefinitely, and years later, there's little sign of the system ever reopening. 
other developments in the urban center have demolished portions of APT infrastructure, originally built to support future expansion. The canals remain as empty as they ever were. Las Colinas represents a curious dichotomy, both a product of car-oriented sprawl, while simultaneously representing one of the Dallas area's most unique urban visions. This dichotomy, of course, is what led to its downfall. In a region notorious for bad transit and poor walkability, the mere existence of the urban center is peculiar. They envisioned an automated train just as Dallas had torn out its trains. They built car-free spaces just as the region was dominated by car-oriented spaces. While much of the urban center's vision has been forgotten, the success of the business center surrounding it mean it will likely continue to exist for years to come, leaving its original 70s-era vision fully intact, waiting for a revival of fortunes. Thank you for watching. This is my first YouTube video and I'm really excited to cover more stories like this, so please hit the like button and subscribe for future content.